And I would like to say a short welcome to everyone. It's really, really nice to see you here. I will just briefly introduce myself. My name is uh, Kota and I'm from Opus University and I'm hosting this great event with some great experts. And we are here because of the Digital Fashion Roundtables project that is running under Lifestyle and Design Cluster. And uh, we are here to discuss digital fashion and digital spaces and possibilities with NFTs and fashion. Today, uh, we have three amazing experts with us who will introduce themselves very shortly. And they will have a conversation based on the questions uh, that you as fashion companies submitted. Uh, so we will try to answer all the questions that came in before, but I also ask you to just listen and leave your questions in the chat. If you have extra questions, we will leave like 10 minutes at the end to answer your questions, or maybe we answer them as we go, but please feel free to leave the questions uh, in the chat. I will monitor it and make sure that it get, they get to the experts. And uh, just so you know, this session will be recorded and will be shared afterwards. So you can send it to your colleagues and peers and so on. So it, uh, it will be online after the session. Uh, and that was my brief intro. And I will just uh, hand over uh, the conversation to Jonas who will be leading the round table today. Good morning, everyone, Keta. Thank you for a good in, uh, introduction. Um, so I will be leading the roundtable today, and uh, I have invited uh, Heve uh, Del Humeur and Clement Fontaine to talk with us. Heve is uh, the founder of Monogramma, and he's an expert on NFTs and social impact. And Clem Clement has uh, founded Token Art, that is a project where um, you can uh, work with NFTs and the law. So he's an uh, expert on NFTs and the whole uh, law and compliance and IP rights part of the NFTs. So we have two uh, very different angles on F NFTs. I have a background in fine art, so I'm an artist. Um, but since I've been working with the blockchain space and NFTs for quite a while, I'm also now an editor at the, the Tokenizer where I write articles and invite people for conversations about NFTs. And I also am a research fellow on ITU, where I research on NFTs. So that's my background and the reason why I'm fascinated with uh, the blockchain space and NFTs. Um, so to begin with, I would like uh, both Heavy and Clément to, uh, to present themselves and maybe shortly tell why they are in the NFT space. And then we get going with the questions afterwards. Uh, Hewe, would you uh, like to uh, start out? Yes, sure, Jonas. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, a pleasure to, uh, to be with you today. Uh, a big hello from Argentina, where I am now. Um, as a short introduction, so I'm Hervé. Uh, I have founded Monogramma uh, about one year ago. I'm coming from the corporate world where I've been working for over 25 years. And uh, since last year, I, did, I, I decided to dedicate my life in see how through uh, uh, the creation of digital art on the blockchain, we would be able to generate uh, social impact. So more than resolving problem, giving exposure to this problem through mechanism that mix art and technology, uh, in this minute, we are supporting two tribes uh, in the Amazonia, um, where what we have been doing with them is creating a, a collection called the Guardian Collection on Super Rare. And uh, our idea is just to, uh, to raise awareness on their issue through um, a collection of art provided by uh, over 60 artists from 52 countries around the world. Uh, that have been deciding to work together uh, behind this idea. And so what, what we are today discovering is that more than NFT as a term or digital art as another, we are entering in a place called artivism. So we are positioning Monogramma as a leader, a global leader in such called artivism, where we use art to generate impact. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Clément, will you uh, shortly also introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, Kata. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you and uh, happy to share uh, what I've learned since now. I'm Clément Fontaine, uh, teacher researcher in law at University of Aix-Marseille, lawyer at uh, 2SN in the company, and uh, I've created uh, token art since three years. What is about token art? Um, I, uh, when I start my PhD uh, four years ago, um, I noticed uh, some problems, some compliance problems about how intellectual property law uh, match with NFTs, because an NFT uh, identify some artwork which are covered by intellectual property law. And people who buy NFT don't really know what the uh, what kind of right they have on their artwork. So the the tool is just to uh, explain uh, what you're buying when you have when you are buying an NFT and what you are owning when you are owning an NFT. Maybe I just show you. It's really simple. You connect your wallet. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah. You connect your wallet and then it will look in for inside of your wallet and, and, and say some pictures, like here the picture says you don't have NFT, you don't have right. Here you have because it's creative commons and you can click and see the contract, legal contract, which is behind of your NFTs. Uh, this is for creative commons. It can be for other uh, licenses, which are on open source on in not open source. Um, and this is for myself. So we already touched upon a lot of things here in, in this uh, short introduction. So there's, uh, I guess some of you are thinking, wow, that's a lot of info already. We were mentioned, there was mentioned super rare and IP rights and different kind of things. And I think uh, I've, at least I think it's important that we just dig deep into what NFTs, uh, what they are, and and uh, maybe start with that as a as a beginning point. Uh, so, have you, uh, will you just really basically tell us what NFTs are for you, um, what they what they represent, and why why they are important to you? Uh, first of all, I believe that the NFT. Uh, should be consider considered by many as a certificate of origin. Okay, that's where on the blockchain there is initially a uh, transaction, and on this transaction, I was uh, Clement was saying there's a quantity of rules that are packed into this transaction that give this asset a certificate of origin, a value, and uh, um, a space of use that are defined. So. To me, uh, it is yeah. It is the first contract that that certify the origin of of the asset, the digital asset. And how does it work then when when you have this asset? Uh, uh, is where is it placed? Uh, how um, how do you people use this cert certificate? There's many space for that from uh, starting from uh, since I see that there is PhD uh, around here, uh, starting by certifying, for example, a, a diploma. Uh, it could be for a property. It could be uh, uh, for uh, digital rights uh, directly. Uh, it, it can be today uh, a way, a fantastic way to track uh, assets from one to the other, I mean, how they are moving and where they are moving. Um, so it, it's very extend when we start to speak about NFT, by depend, uh, maybe uh, not everyone knows that, but it's called non-fungible token. This is the reason why it's called NFT, non-fungible token. That means that there is only one token each time uh, it is generated through this transaction. And this token is unique and unrepeatable with uh, is low included, and I would like uh, Clement to explain that because uh, he knows surely much more than I do. Uh, but this is what you can understand on my side as an NFT. Yeah, super, super interesting. And I think uh, just before we go into the whole uh, legal and uh, use case, I, um, um, 
I would like to ask you, Clément, uh, why NFTs are important for the creative industry? Well, the, the creative industry is like um, a big change for them. The, the rules are changing. Just, just before, I would like to, to, to speak about the low point of view of NFT. If you just mm -hmm. watch an NFT from a low point of view, Uh, without anything, like if you go and create uh, ERC uh, 721 on uh, on Ethereum and do not add anything, just add uh, 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 pictures inside. It's a, it's like a link which is pointing to a pictures, and you can compare it with with um, um, ID card of a car. When, when the policeman asks you the ID card of your car, it's like a description of something. It's a description of a pictures which is stored inside and uh, inside of, uh, of internet. Uh, and you can compare it as well with a, a piece of paper where on this piece of paper, you add an image, you add uh, a link to a videos. This is only this. Uh, if if we see uh, and we do not and we do not add any contract or something behind, it can be compared with this. And um, since we know that for the creative industry, why it is important? I mean, it's all the value that can be identified with an NFT, but it has to be in the right way. So it, it can be. Uh, uh, It can be positive for the creative industry, but there is some trap they should avoid about NFTs. And what are those traps? <laughs> yeah. Um, for instance, if you if you do not write a contract and if you do not specify some legal uh, important point in your NFT during the purchase agreement, then there is no, it, it can be considered, your, your, your agreement can be considered a, we, uh, which has no counterpart. And in an agreement, you need to have a counterpart. So if you sell a piece of paper, which identify an image, it's a parallel with an NFT, right? You sell an NFT which identify an image. You sell a piece of paper which identify an image, but you don't say anything about the right, the copyright about this image. You don't say if the person has the right to resell it on Rarible, for instance, or you don't say if the person has the right to fractionalize it on fractional.art, or you don't say if the person has the right to rent it. Uh, then the buyer is buying something, but he doesn't know if he has the right to use the image, which is identified in the NFT to sell it on Rarible or OpenSea or other platform or to fractionalize it on the fractionalize or other platform or to rent it on other platform. And then, uh, yeah, the, it can be a misunderstood between the buyer and the seller. And this can lead to conflict. So this is a trap like, Yeah, so, so when issuing an NFT, it's important to have, uh, have these things in mind and be sure that you, uh, you get, it, uh, get that right from the beginning. Um, Herve, um, can you explain us, uh, just in very simple, uh, how, how, it, uh, how one makes an NFT? Um... What, what should be the process? Yeah, what is the process from, from, uh, from you have an idea, you do something and you want to make an NFT, where would you go? How would you do it? So there is, there is always different way to create an NFT, starting from uh, your own uh, contract to a platform contract, okay? Um, but to make it simple uh, and, and referring to a, an NFT, I would choose uh, immediately a, a place where uh, you have a lot of traffic, a platform which is audited to create your NFT, 
uh, and and start from there. And one of the biggest platform today, I would say, uh, very comparative to what could be uh, Amazon or eBay today uh, in the real world, uh, could be considered as as OpenSea on Ether. Okay, there is other marketplace that are providing the same services. One on Tezos could be called um, uh, Object. Uh, another on uh, on Solana that is uh, Solana Art or others. Uh, so each blockchain has today on Binance you have. So each blockchain today offers this kind of marketplace, and these marketplace are providing audited contracts. Okay, on the one they are taking a commission no? for each uh, sales or resales of of the digital asset. So to come back to, to an, an answer to your question, uh, my recommendation for someone who wants to enter uh, is, not, is not trying to look something complex. It's just going to a marketplace, which is an open marketplace where you have the right to mint. And from there, just learn. Okay, you have a learning phase of how do you mint? What is the weight of the, of the, of the file you have to mint? Uh, what kind of, uh, uh, how do you call this? What kind of file will you use for a better um, quality or, uh, or user experience? But there's a lot of variables that need to be taken in account. Um, and, and from there, I would, I would not try to create or to work on my own contract today. Let's make it simple. And today you have the platform to do that. Okay, yeah. And, and in this conversation also, maybe it's uh, because you mentioned uh, different platforms uh, and different blockchains. Um, so there's a question uh, that uh, is, is, is asking how to choose a blockchain and what wallet should one uh, use when choosing a, uh, a blockchain and platform? Um, to my eyes, the, the, each blockchain as as a value proposition okay and this value proposition sometimes goes against uh, maybe the strategy of or the, the positioning of the product or the product you want to sell when i'm referring to this and it, this is changing uh, I'm, I'm giving you a vision of today and if i would give if i would have spoken six months ago uh, i would not have this vision today in particular uh, on Tezos, okay? So to come back to this, I believe that if we want to really have exposure, and we are speaking about art, we are speaking about fashion, we are speaking about digital assets that today are collectionable or the one you can bring as an object into the metaverse, I mean, we are speaking in this side. So most, uh, first, firstly, most of the metaverse today are working on, uh, on Ether. Okay, you have few one that are just growing now on, on Solana, uh, Polygon is working on it. I mean, there's a, a creation of, of, of different metaverse, but if you want to go and test your product, you need to have at front of you uh, people. And these people need to be uh, healthy or sufficiently healthy in it to access to your product uh, because you are competing. It's true, you're competing with many, but you have much more exposure with people that have the resources to invest. Now, if you are someone who wants to start and who wants to explore, you have platforms that today are much more efficient at, on a cost uh, or value of, of minting a, an object. And in this case, you can use a big example is Tesos, for example, today, where you can go on it and you can create an object, whatever you like. You can spread your contract. I mean, it's totally, uh, it's, it's totally, uh, slim when you have slim when you operate it uh, but on the other side the price of the product that you want to promote uh, in most of the case will be much lower than you can find or that you will find on ether but this is changing today you have uh, asset on tezos that are sold uh, over 1000 tezos and this was not true uh, six months ago so Tezos is coming uh, today on the on the market. Uh, Solana has been doing the same a lot on collection, where they have been moving a lot a lot of uh, of resources. Uh, but the public is different. Okay, if you go to a public of Tezos, 
Tezos are people that have been uh, a kind of uh, not, I would not use underground, but there have been people that have, were working and they didn't have all the resources other artists have. So they have been working hard and, and they have created their, their name on Tezos. And on the other side, you have uh, Ether, where uh, artists had the chance to, uh, to create and to build their image. And today, uh, yes, I mean, there is this kind of, of madness uh, on price when you see people buying uh, a punk for $1 million or a, a, a beautiful one-to-one -one from X copy in half a million dollars. Uh, or Theosius in $200,000. And it, it's very similar to my eyes that I lived it because I was working in the tech industry for 25 years. It's very similar to my eyes of what happened in 2000. What the, the bubble of the NFT has bursted to my eyes. And from, the, from now, I believe that uh, as Clément is working on, I mean, we need to organize, we need to put rules that are much more clear um, and, and, and to the public. And one of the, the, the not the experiment, but one of the things that is coming very strongly, which is the creative commons that was referring to Clement, where today you have a quantity of right uh, that you can explore, ex, uh, explore uh, using the artwork or the asset that you have bought and starting maybe to rent it, to join it, to transform it, to uh, print it or whatever you like because it's an asset that is yours and uh, and yeah you are free to do whatever you like with it i think uh, that's a really good answer and it also opens up for for asking uh, clement with if if you are a company like a fashion brand or uh, like a registered company and you want to enter the nft space what uh, what should you aware about be aware about uh, in terms of ip rights and and how do you how do you in legal senses enter the space and begin to work there um you should be aware of all the ip rights <laughs> but i mean it depends on the strategy like um, i was in a, in a conference where was sold a beautiful borrowed ape but in a physical version and uh, we can imagine that a uh, fashion brand would like to as well sell their nft of their uh, fashion garments and then you can see uh, somewhere else, the physical version of the of the garment. So this is possible. This was possible with Oredeep because when I uh, ask to the seller how he managed to do it, he says, "I've been, uh, I've read, I've read the, the legal license of Oredeep, and I see that uh, NFT holders has the right." to commercially exploit, exploit, exploit the, um, the artwork of the Broidey. And since, since this information has to come to the seller, he just print, take the, the pictures and then print it on a beautiful medium and then sell it because he was the NFT holders or because he has the consent of the NFT holders of the Broidey. So, and it can be ap applied for fashion brand. If a fashion brand want to uh, sell a garment as NFTs and give to NFT holders the right to reproduce on physical medium and allow NFT holders to sell it or not, maybe they don't want this. Maybe they just want to allow the uh, virtual garment to be uh, interoperable uh, to be import and export in all metaverse in order to allow someone just to wear it and, and say, yeah, I, I have this garment. So, so it depends from the, it depends of the, the strategy of um, the um, uh, fashion brands. But um, first of all, I would say, be aware that when you, the, the basic information that you have the, intellectual property right of the artwork that you are uh, making an NFT with. Uh, could be great to ask the consent of the author, but I think this is already in the process of fashion brands. Second of all, when you create the NFT, 
with uh, this artwork. Um, right on a license, what kind of right you want to give to NFT holders. Do you want to let them just use it as an NFT? Like, do you want to let them just buy and sell on platform market, NFT platform market? Or do you want to give a little bit more, right? Like for, in for instance, uh, let them go in a metaverse, uh, in sandbox, and after go in um, decentralized with the same, um, and use the bridge of sandbox. Uh, maybe we can talk about this, but I, uh, sandbox create a bridge, like you have the, your NFTs, and then you, you use your, your tools, it takes, the pixels of your NFTs and adapt it for sandbox environment. So for instance, if you have a borrowed ape, you go and you your avatar in sandbox can be at the image of your borrowed ape. And then you can walk in sandbox with your borrowed ape in three dimension rather than your borrowed ape NFT is in two dimension. This needs the right to be adapted, for instance, as well. So it depends on the strategy of the of the fashion brand but uh, there is a lot of possibility it's always based on the uh, legal logic that we all know uh, the creator has a right and he has to write down if he wants to sell or if he want to give some some of his right to nft holders or others or other people would a right be that, for example, uh, the the creator of the the garment gets some kind of uh, royalty every time that it's it is used in in the metaverse, or how to set up these rules so you are sure that you get uh, paid for your labor uh, in a later process than just the sale of the piece? Yes, the the the, the royalty uh, is always a discussion because you have platforms who allow. Uh, each time you sell the NFT or each time an NFT holder say, sell the NFT to give back some royalties of this selling to the creator, to the creator. But, but because the NFT can be uh, sell and buy in all platform which are connect to the blockchain where the NFT is stored, like for instance, you can buy and sell in OpenSea you can buy an NFT in OpenSea and go and sell uh, the same NFT in Rarible. There are two platforms. There are two different person. I mean, legal person, but still, there are two different person. And this is just an example. There is a lot of platforms which are uh, which allow you to buy and sell your NFT. And some platform don't give the possibility to get your royalties. So. If you program 5% of royalties on OpenSea, you buy the, open C, the, the NFT on OpenSea, great. The 5% of royalties goes to the creator. But then you go on another platform and you decide to sell it, to sell your NFT, which, which did not program the royalty functionality. Then the creator will not have the royalties but the, the, the seller can still do it. And this is the difference between be able to do something and be allowed to do something. Like the NFT, it gives not to the right, but the possibility to, to do a lot of things. Fractionalize, rent, buy, sell in all platform, import in a lot of metaverse. But this does not mean that you have the right to do it. It's like you can still, uh, cell phone but you don't have the right to steal the cell phone but it's the same with with nft you can do a lot of things but you're not always allowed to do it great uh, thanks um heavy i want to uh, go back to uh, your expertise with the social impact of nfts it would be interesting to hear your perspective on on what nfts bring to uh, the to the creative world in terms of uh, distributing uh, uh, the possibility of showing work and also owing work and maybe also uh, presenting work in different places uh, that were not uh, exposed to to creative works before and couldn't also produce creative works before okay quite a question huh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
<coughs> sorry. So the 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 focus of uh, as I was uh, introducing uh, or I was uh, explaining at the uh, in my introduction, the focus of uh, monogramma is to generate social impact and. Uh, Coming from the corporate world, uh, I have seen a lot of such called charity, which uh, at the end help a lot the corporation to uh, improve sometimes their final result or the year or their account on their accountability. Uh, so around Monogramma, I created a business model, which is based on a, and trying to, to call it based on fair trade, uh, on the fair trade, which means that the artist is bringing his artwork through our contract, he will receive 51%. Since we don't have any more intermediary, this 30% that was taken by the intermediary in general is just sent to a treasury fund, a social impact treasury fund, which is managed by the whole community, which means artists and collector have the right to bring a project and they have the right to vote depending on the artwork that they've been producing or buying. And the 19% that uh, stays will go directly to Monogramma to ensure sustainability of the organization and uh, uh, marketing and, uh, and OPEX in general, no? Operate, operating expenditure. So what we have been creating is this, this business model. And when we have started to uh, present uh, this uh, this project to uh, to uh, the, the 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 nft or the crypto art industry in particular we were contacted by uh, two tribes in the amazonia the sintalarga and the suri tribes and uh, since i've been living 25 years in latin america i had the chance to live in brazil too so we were connected and and i speak portuguese so we were able to build this bridge together and they just started to explain their problems. And from there, what we have been doing is saying, okay, how do I, how do I create a strategy where I'm gonna raise awareness? I'm not solving the issue, but I'm raising awareness on a problem so people can engage and start to think around that. Or we might, we might start to move the thinking of people. And I do believe that this should apply for the industry too, it will. Uh, since there is no more, as I was saying, there is no more intermediation, and there is a lot, a lot of money that was spent uh, during all this process that is today uh, that could be uh, uh, ge that could generate good to the society or create social value in general. So we have been contacted by this tribe. We have been understanding their problem. We have been creating this collection with all these artists around the world. And what we have discovered, which is very interesting, and I will, I will show you uh, what happened, is that in the way we discovered that, and this is something that I will present in New York uh, next week, uh, is that the cultural heritage, the ancestral cultural heritage, is today a way for financial freedom, thanks to NFT, thanks to the blockchain. So these people can start to really create and rescue their own culture. And from this content, rescuing their culture, they will be able to extract cultural assets that will be sold on the market, okay? That are something where, which is going further than a, a, a piece of art. It is a piece of art, but it is linked to something mystical. And when you speak to something mystical, it's very, it's, it, it's something new to connect with the artwork. I mean, all of us, I've been collecting art all my life and the connection with physical art is something that you can touch, you see, you have it with you. I mean, you, it, it's something like it's part of your space, you know, but to connect with the digital artwork, what we are thinking and what we are finding is that if you start to add mysticism around this artwork, people are connecting in a totally other way because they feel it as part of themselves because it's answering to their values or to their dreams or to their, uh, uh, how do you call it, when you look after uh, some roots, okay? So what we have been doing around this is creating uh, a mysticism. And how do we do that? We are using technology, 
And part of this technology is uh, geolocation, is uh, augmented reality, is uh, product uh, GLB files to enter the metaverse. But in general, to give you a very simple example uh, that I will share with you uh, in the chat, if you like, um, we are able today to use an artwork in different media. It can be on a marketplace where it is sold, but to our eyes, a digital product today, the value or the real value of a digital product today or digital asset, as we want to call it, uh, is linked to his influence. So if we are able to generate link through different channels with people, not only we're going to have or improve exposure, but the value, the residual value of this asset will be through the market much more important in the future. Okay, because we have an object which is replicable, usable, and used, uh, you can have it on every every phone or every uh, how do you call that uh, every uh, uh, screen or uh, AR. And actually, what I'm going to share with you now is a link that uh, you can use, and then if you have your cell phone in front of that, you can click on it. Or you you can click on on the link I'm going to send you. You will have a QR code that you can flash. And we are actually doing this uh, product with, uh, jointly with Yahoo. And uh, you will see what happens. But it's, it's very interesting as an experience. And uh, I'm very happy to share that. So to answer, your, to, to answer your question, Jonas, what I think is that today, at least in my area, okay, as I told, NFTs is like, it's a contract. I mean, there's contract for everything. As Clement, I mean, this is why there is lawyers that like you have contract for everything. And NFT is a kind of contract at, at the very base. That's the way you define it. So in my area, which is today, uh, I would like to uh, digital art in general, we have this, uh, uh, discovered that through disintermediation, we are able to uh, take a big, I mean, we are speaking about 30% of the total sales, you know? So we are able to dedicate 30% of the total sales to a common fund. And this common fund already financed the first project where uh, we have been financing uh, both tribes. Uh, we did finance uh, the use of cell phone, of last generation cell phone, that we are, and we are training them not only to communicate, but to register their culture, which means that we have given them an extra eye mobility so they can take their cell phone and start to register their culture. And from this registry of the culture, we are just uh, securing it uh, into a, how do you call this? A, a, a cloud based uh, uh, R drive, a cloud, a cloud, cloud based drive where all this information is, is uh, uh, you call this, established. And uh, yes, I mean, today we received, so they've been creating uh, their first NFT uh, coming from their picture. And uh, it is something that, uh, uh, yeah, maybe I can share, uh, I can share my, my screen maybe uh, to, to show you, no? But this is part of the 25 first picture that, or NFT that we did release, uh, that we are today um, using, uh, uh, you call this? Uh, we will present it to us. We are, we are minting tonight on Super Rare. So this is the first one uh, you can see the second one, which is Elias, all what you see here was created by themselves. This is the sister of Elias. So this is the kind of thing that we are getting now, one month after uh, giving them the tools to start to generate content, one month. And we are about to launch now uh, another, another project on Tezos, 
which is going to be this kind of, uh, of product that you can see here. And all this product that could, you can see were designed on a cell phone with an aluminum pen. And what you see here is designed digitally on a cell phone with an aluminum pen. So it has the size of the screen of the cell phone. And what we're going to do is launching a collection of indigenous uh, screen uh, protector. You know, so on your on your um, on your cell phone when you have it, you will be able instead of having this uh, kind of design to include a directly an indigenous. Uh, uh, design which is done uh, directly by the tribes in Amazonia and you will have it uh, in the back of your cell phone okay uh, so this is the kind of, of, of space that we are in this minute exploring uh, we don't know where it goes we don't know it's an experiment but what I do believe is that uh, fashion companies might be very interested in meeting this kind of culture and integrating them into their entry to the metaverse because they will already integrate such called uh, social responsibility into the design of their products at a digital level. So what I'm trying to do now is with all the work that we have done is just creating this, this uh, collection. We have over uh, yeah, nearly 200 artwork today. And this collection, the idea is to start to rent it. So Clement will help me to see how we're going to do that. <laughs> but the idea is to start to have this collection because we have the, 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 the right on this collection as monogramma. And the idea is to start to rent this collection under the same concept, which means that 51% will go to the artist, 30% will go to the farm, 90% will go to, to monogramma, and we will start to create this new fund and invest in, in new projects. So this is the kind of, of thing that we have been, uh, where we are today. Um, thank you, Heavy. Um, I want to, uh, because I can see time is running much faster than as always than expected. Um, so um, we now heard uh, a lot of good things that uh, NFTs can bring both for, for the creators and people involved in projects like Monogramma. Uh, but uh, Clement, uh, uh, there's some concerns I know, and I could see also in questions already, people have been asking, is this a bubble? Uh, are these high sales? Are they inflated? And also there's another concern, and that's the environment. Uh, so those two questions I would like you to address if, if that's possible. Um, And that was to uh, Clément, the question. Are you there still? All right. Uh, yeah. Can you repeat your, your question, please, Jonas? Yes. So, so the first is um, the question that I think a lot of people in the public and, and people wanting to enter the space, they are kind of concerned if this is a bubble we're seeing and also is the bubble yeah. bursting? So yeah. does it make sense to enter where you lose money? And also um, not lose money, but maybe not being able to sell your, your garments or your digital fashion. But another question would also be, um, do I do harm to the environment when I begin to make NFTs? And what's about all this uh, energy that is wasted when you make NFTs? Okay, I, I, I thank you very much for the, that, this question. Um, so the question of the bubble is really difficult to answer, but it's art. Um, let's make a parallel with something which happened in, uh, by an artist, uh, uh, Piero Monzi. Maybe you heard about Piero Monzi who creates um, this uh, can conserve and inside of it, he, yeah, he 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 did not. Um, he just sell some some can, and it was all the value of the can of Piero Monzi was not about the product in itself, but about the message. Okay. Um, Interesting. When it was physical product, right? But all the value was not about the product, but about the message, which is around. And the cane, the, the cane, the piece of cane was like uh, at the beginning, 
just metal and inside nothing and uh, it was sold at the price of gold and why people were buying this was not because he, he, of the physical product not because they were happy to have the physical product in hand but because of the message that was behind and this is all about uh, not all but this is a part of art and when we speak about bubbles we speak about finance we speak about financial financial product and uh, we see that nfts is in the in the middle maybe it's a financial product sometimes it's a financial product sometimes it's really art real art because it's, uh, already now the this the same can they did not lose value at all uh, but some financial product lose value and art products financial product does not um, uh, they, 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 they did not conduct the same way so we, we are inside of two world and it uh, it's uh, the meeting of two world and we are not yeah after you have make your own information about the products you're buying and um, and see if behind there is something that seems to speak to you or not. But uh, yeah, if I can answer with this question, I think it's, uh, yeah. The... Yeah, that makes sense. So you say, um, uh, what I hear you say, I'll just correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that uh, at least as a producer, you should think about your work and, uh, and that, comes first and if there's an interest in the art piece uh, in this in this context the the, the, the di digital fashion people will buy it and uh, that should be the concern you should have and not so much inflated prices or not yes but maybe the the, the price of is will will decrease in 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 a couple of years but there is something sure nft entered the story and uh, it will not go. It will not go out of the story. Right now, uh, it uh, we will we will still speak about NFTs in five ten years. It's here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I can complete what was saying Clement uh, about financial uh, behavior of the market, we need to see on the art that there is much more offer than demand. Okay, so anyway, and, and this is uh, the, the market rules, uh, demand and offer apply to the art, at least to this industry in the, in the NFT. This is what I've seen. Uh, it's, it's a personal observation. But um, today, to my eyes, uh, we are passing through, uh, uh, yeah, the, the industry needs to clean up. And I do believe that... Uh, we can call it as we want, but uh, to me, there is the market offering so much and the demand is not there. So obviously, uh, a lot is going to fall down. Okay, You have such called blue chip that in time, as uh, Clement was referring to, will just stay at their value and improve as you buy uh, Dali or Picasso or uh, Wilfredo Lam or whatever you like. Um, but on the other side, the market demand today for this collection or whatever product that is put on the market is not there. I mean, there's much more offer than demand. So now, how the industry or the fashion industry enter uh, into this ecosystem, I do believe that it will not enter only because of the brand. It will be a help. But what I always say to my artists, you need five pillars to be successful into this industry. You need a brand, you need a story, you need how to communicate this story, you need integrating into this, the way of your signature, which means that you not only need the brand, the signature will be the way you can apply, the way you can use it, the, the way the rules you will include it, as, a, as a Clement was saying, I mean, who can use it, etc. 
Okay. And the last one, which is the relation of the community that you're going to create around uh, your, you, you, you need to transform it into a lifestyle. If you're able to jump into this as a lifestyle, I believe that you can be successful because you will link once again your consumers with emotional. It's, it will be an emotional uh, connection with your product. Okay. So it's very important to think that it's not because you're only a brand and you have nice. Uh, I, I just shared with you a uh, dress X that uh, is into my my uh, radar. Uh, it's it's a very interesting company that is exploring once again. But they are they are mixing uh, AR uh, the way you can have this this. Um, this new uh, you call garments, etc. You can use them in the metaverse. You can transform yourself. You whatever. And uh, I found uh, the this company quite interesting in the way that they are uh, looking at the product. But to come back to this, you need to create a link with your users. It's not because only with your brand or the design of your product. You need to go further. And uh, if you're able to do that, I do. I do believe that you would be successful. And you need to give, for example, to your product right functionality features i mean they become this product keys that can open right participation to a challenge or whatever you know so you can start to really add a, a quantity of features around your product which is not existing in the real life but which is building your relation with your community with your consumers great uh, Kata, I think we already uh, jumped into the question somehow, but maybe you have some for, for the panel that we uh, should uh, address before yeah. time's up. It's actually connected to what just uh, was said, uh, because Heidi was asking, uh, what is your opinion about NFTs, if, if they should be linked to a physical product, or if it's not a necessity? That was one of the questions uh, that was... Uh, uh, put in the chat. Do you think it adds extra value if it also exists physically, or it's better if it's just a digital garment or asset? Maybe you can uh, answer that, Clement. I know we had some conversations about this digital NFT and physical assets. Uh, it's really difficult to answer because we have a lot of example in NFT space where like, for instance, CryptoPunks are not at all physical. You can not even, uh, or CryptoPunks when it was created was no license attached, which means that you cannot make reproduction of the physical asset of the CryptoPunks. You cannot uh, create a physical reproduction of your CryptoPunk and then sell it as a physical paint, for instance and still was one of the huge collection and it enters the story as well and there is not at all physical link with it and in the other end you have board day Piot club which is another collection of uh, a jpeg image and totally dematerialized but they give you the right to to make some reproduction on physical medium and it's as well and it is as well uh, one of the great collection, it's it take part of the blue ships, as uh, Harvey said uh, just before. So um, it's all, it all depends of what kind of message you want to give, what kind of rights and uh, possibility you want to give to your community. Uh, your community is represented through NFT holders holding. So and uh, so. Sometimes it add value. Sometimes there is maybe some no links. It depends. Thank you. There was another request for all the links and platforms and marketplaces and so on. But I will make sure to collect these uh, from the speakers and then I will send it to all the participants. So you have things to look into. And maybe as a closing question, because we, we talked about this bubble burst and so on, and uh, it's kind of, uh, I hope we did not scare anyone away because this is, uh, this is kind of a, I don't know, maybe a scary conversation for many of the brands that are here today. But uh, if 
if you could look into the future, what would be your prediction like five years from now? Because you mentioned that both of you mentioned, all of you mentioned that NFTs are here to stay. But I think for many brands, it's still a very much a question if they should uh, get into it or not and how to get into it. It's kind of a scary topic and also a topic surrounded by a lot of questions and doubts and kind of like mysteries. But uh, you said it, that it's here to stay. And how do you think it will look like five years from now? And especially when you think about the fashion industry, do you have any predictions? I don't know who wants to answer first. It would be really nice if you okay, answer first. the question. Yeah. <laughs> I jump first. Uh, as I said, I believe that uh, the fashion industry is, has its place uh in 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 this ecosystem because just think that what we're going to find in the metaverse it's a lot is going to be repeated from the real world with more fantasy because you're in material so you can be who you are who you want where you want you can fly you can uh, dress as uh, whatever you like and uh and be part of this so the positioning of the fashion industry needs to really uh, be, it, it's an extension of what exists today. It's a new dimension that needs to be go further, okay? Not only that you're going to transform your asset, your physical asset into a digital asset, but once you have created the digital asset, you need to give feature to this digital asset. You need to give uh, a, a way to create this community that will be interacting with this digital asset. You need to bring a real value to your community. If you don't, which is going much more further than the brand and the, and, and the aesthetic, okay? Is how you connect with the final user. And this final user today uh, is very easy to, to be bored. I mean, it, I know that when you communicate on, on my side and uh, people have, yeah, I need to catch the eye of people in less than one second, okay? And then uh, once I catch the eye, I have maybe two or three seconds to send the message. And at five seconds, the person will decide if you want to interact with me or it just pass and, and it pass to another thing. So this is, we are working at this speed. So how do we catch the eye? How do we send a message that is sufficiently interesting? And how do we invite the engagement? And the engagement, as, as I shared with you, for example, with this experience, which is native into your browser, is a one-click experience. It's something you just flash and you leave the experience. So this is something you really need to think. Simplicity, intermediation. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a whole new world, but you have the asset to do so. You have the asset, the history, the knowledge. You need to integrate graphic designer, you need to integrate, but strategy, as we were saying to you. What is your strategy behind? I really like that you said that. Actually, sorry, just to comment on this, because often when we talk about this uh, digital world, it's I, I feel like people just think that it's a copy paste of the physical. But you said that it's the extension of the physical. And I think that's a really, really good approach to this. And I think it's also something to think about for the brands as well, that they don't just want to copy paste everything into the digital world but they want to think about it as a more open or like, like a space for more creativity and it's just an addition to the already existing world so that's that was a great comment and i want to do a small closings for you to really think remember in 2000 about the tech industry when it burst okay remember amazon at this time remember all this um, IT or, or tech company in 2000, everybody said, yeah, you know what, tech company, they were a burst, etc. And today, uh, this world is not so bad. So just think that we are passing through, the, the industry is not even massive. I mean, it was just born three years ago, you know? So it's 1000 day, we are 1000 day old or maybe a little bit more for some, I mean, maybe 1,500, but I mean, it's nothing. We are just starting. 
So this ecosystem is reinventing itself. You have different forces entering as technology, as design, as a, a feature that you can start to put on the blockchain, as legal uh, assumption on the, the same product. So there is a lot of consideration to take before creating this digital asset. But this digital asset for the fashion industry, and I insist, uh, is you have your place to play. And, and when I say to play, yes, include something where people can play with it, the way to connect. Uh, if I may add one thing, uh, the fashion brand work in the same uh, links with NFTs. Uh, I remember this conversation I had with a friend which has bought, bought like, I think it was a Gucci bag, a Gucci bag. And I asked why she asked a Gucci bag and not a simple bag, why? And she says, because it's Gucci. And then I, she says, why, why NFT? It's the same in the same thing. The, the, the person, uh, the, the physical world is an extension as every said. And when you go inside of the, of the web free, and uh, even though if even the, the interaction, internet interaction, you can create your own personality. You can go in a metaverse and have your own personality, your own way to, to, to show who you are, a way to stand out finally, to be unique, to show who you are, to be yourself. And all NFTs allow you to show to people what kind of value you support, what kind of discussion you enter in, which way you think, et cetera, et cetera. And this is uh, what NFT can also give you. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, maybe and, oh, Jonas, you want to just close the session because we are running a little yeah, bit late. Yeah. We're yeah. running over time. Yeah, yeah. we should uh, finish now. I think there was a lot of topics brought, that was brought up and a lot of things to think about and hopefully something to look into with the links. And as Kata said, there will be sent out all these different platforms and metaverses that were mentioned. So you have something to look into. So thank you for showing up, all of you. And thank you for your questions. Um, and thank you to you, Javi and Clement, Clement for, for joining us today for this conversation about NFTs 101. Yes, thank you all. It was really, really great. Our pleasure to be there. <laughs> and uh, we are here. You, you know, our work um, is today to educate. So it's a pleasure to really participate in this kind of conversation because not only on one side we have we have the chance to maybe understand better an industry, and and maybe help to build this bridge between the real life and the metaverse. And uh, our, our responsibility today is, I believe, uh, try to help in educating people, industry, uh, and experiment. We're all doing experiment here. Nobody knows what's come out from this. So at the very first, when you're going to do an investment as a company, just make it as you're going to lose it. And then you can start to really work on that because it's an experiment. You don't know the outcome of that. Nobody knows. Great final words. <laughs> hope uh, hope everyone got inspired and uh, I will let you all go. And we have another roundtable conversation coming up on Friday, this Friday at nine. So I hope uh, I will see you all there as well. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao.